today our focus is going to be on geometric sequences. Often when we hear the name geometric, we often think of shapes. We don't often think about the idea that geometric can be used in multiple ways. So today we're going to explore one of those ways. Now with sequences, sequences are sets of numbers that happen in some kind of pattern way. And we're going to go over first of all a review of arithmetic sequences which is something you did previously in algebra in that algebra 1a sequence and also we're going to worry about geometric sequences and how we create them so that's going to be really our focus today so first of all let's do a little reminder of these vocabulary words so an arithmetic sequence is a sequence that's made by adding a number over and over again so if I was to look at this pattern that's over in here, first of all, sequences often have these dot, dot, dots at the end. That's pretty normal. And what you're going to see when we go to look at these is they're going to want to see what the pattern is that's happening to get from one number to the next. And in order for it to be a sequence, especially an arithmetic one, we're going to talk about the idea that we'd like to figure out what you're adding to get from step to step. Now, I'm looking at a sequence of numbers here that I really think of when I'm thinking of even numbers. Starting at 2, 4, 6, and 8. So if I wanted to consider this to be arithmetic, it looks like I would add 2 to get from step to step. Now the thing about a sequence is even though we only see 4 numbers, the big idea with this is I could continue the sequence if I wanted to. And even though on this one 2 happens to be my first term because it's the first number, and there would be then a second term, a third, and a fourth, that means that I could continue the pattern to the fifth, the tenth, the twentieth if I wanted to. Sometimes that can be very time consuming, but if I have a pattern, I at least have a way to do that. Now, if I were to go and look at this one and go down to the next one, which is geometric. Geometric is multiply, is made by multiplying a number over and over again. So on this one, I want to look at how my numbers are changing from place to place. Now it has to be the same pattern every time. So actually if I'm looking at these first two here, I can actually see that part of multiplying by 5. Now I want to make sure it works continuously, so from 10 to 50, would also be multiplying by another 5 and 50 to 250 would also be multiplying by another 5. That means it's geometric because it's a multiple of over and over again multiplying by 5 but it also gives me a way to complete the pattern past where I can see. Now in the next one common ratio. A common ratio is the number that you multiply by over and over again. So in the example that I just did, we talked about that 5 was the number we multiplied over and over again. That means that my common ratio would be 5 in this case. Now you do have to remember a geometric sequence is made by multiplying over and over again. Same number. There could be lots of patterns that we can make without having the same number every time. So you've got to really remember that. Now let's take a look at a couple examples. On the first one, they're already telling us that they know that this is a common, they want us to find a common ratio. So we already know it's geometric. We don't have to figure that out. But they want to know what number it is that's going from place to place here. And they want to make sure that that's happening in a way that makes sense. So in this one, probably from 3 to 12 makes it easiest for us to see that it's a multiple of 4. But I have to make sure that it continues to work for the other numbers in the sequence. So 12 to 48 would also be a multiple of 4. 48 to 192 would also be a multiple of 4. So the common ratio here would be 4. Now, where we see a lot of our issues are things like B. On B, it becomes an issue to a certain degree because the numbers are getting smaller and people don't really know what they're supposed to multiply by if the numbers are getting smaller. So let's just take a look at pattern first because we've got to see what happens 
from one spot to the next. So to get from 80 to 40, that really looks like it's a division of 4. And really, if I continue it all the way down, that division of 4 looks like it continues to happen over and over again. The big deal with this one is that when I find a common ratio, it cannot be divided by. It has to be a multiplied idea. So if I have divided by 4 and I want to change it in some way to look like it's a multiplication problem, I would have to multiply it by 1 fourth. So dividing by 4 is the same or equivalent to multiplying by 1 fourth. So in this one that means that my common ratio would be 1 fourth. Now those are for ones that you already know it's geometric. So what do we do on examples like 2 where we have to figure it out? Now do remember, arithmetic is adding and geometric is multiplying. So that's kind of a big deal for us. But I want to know how the numbers are changing here. So I'm going for a pattern. So on this one, it looks like 2 is being added each time. And that's our pattern. If adding 2 is what's going on, then that means this one has to be arithmetic. Arith arithmetic occurs because I'm multiplying over and over again, or adding over and over again by that plus 2. So, now on B, I have to figure out again how this is happening to get from step to step. And when I start to look, I know it's going down. So that either means I have to be adding a negative number, or I'm going to have to be multiplying by a number that's less than 1, like I did over here with this 1 fourth. So if I start to look at the change, the change isn't the same every time, at least as far as adding a number. So there's no way it can be like adding a negative number because I see a change of 28 here, and a change of 14 here, and a change of 7 here. It's not the same all the way down. But it does look like I'm dividing by 2 to make this happen. And actually when I looked at the sequence of numbers, this was the one that really clued me into the dividing by 2. That's what first made me think of it. So if I'm looking at this problem, and it looks like it's dividing by 2. Remember, that we can't do divided. We have to do multiplying. So it would either be multiplying by 1 half or multiplying by 0.5. Either one would be okay. But if you're multiplying, then that means this kind of a problem has to be geometric. Okay, now that's kind of the basis of some of these problems. Let's take a look at the next one. In the next one, they're going to give us actually a little formula up here that focuses on geometric sequences. What I think is kind of nice about this formula is if they give you a sequence and they want you to find the 27th one, normally I'd have to take the first four numbers they give me and I would have to continue the pattern over and over and over again until I get to the 27th value. In this kind of a formula here, it will allow me to kind of do the skip ahead method where maybe I know the first couple numbers that are in the sequence, or I know a pattern, and then I continue it. So on this first one, this n that's in there stands for the number of terms. So the first number in your sequence is your first term. The second number in the sequence is the second term. That's Both these n values are going to tell you the term you're on. This a value is whatever my first number is. R is my common ratio, and it's a number I multiply by over and over again. So in example number five, let's take a look at some of these so maybe we can start to get the hang of it. We're going to have to find the first. We're going to have to find the fourth. And we're going to have to find the eighth term for these. Now just look at this formula, and we're going to compare it to the formula up here. The 5 that's here is in the spot where the first term is. That means if I were really going to make this sequence and just look at the numbers, 
5 would be my first value. This 3 is in the same spot as the common ratio, which means that to get any other term after 5, I would have to multiply it by 3. So if it's 5 and I multiply it by 3, my next one would be 15. If I multiplied that by 3, then it would be 45. And I could keep this pattern going if I wanted to. But the big idea with this is if they give us a formula, we can kind of skip ahead. So I want to show you how this works with numbers maybe that you could figure out on your own. And then we'll see how this goes. So in this first one, if it's the first term they want you to find, that means n has to equal 1. The fourth term, n would have to equal 4. And the eighth term, n would have to equal 8. Now my job is actually to take this equation and plug them in. So on the first one I'm going to plug in 1. The second one I'm going to have to plug in 4. And the next one I'm going to have to plug in 5. Ooh, sorry, 8. I really want that to be 5, I guess. <laughs> so 5 times 3, the 8 minus 1. So on this problem, I could already see that I have some calculating to do it. Just simple calculating and a calculator. But probably the easiest thing to see on this one is this 1 minus 1 is just going to give me 0. So this 3 to the 0 is really just a big fat 1. So really, 5 times 1 is going to be 5. Now on the next one, this part right here, 4 minus 1 is going to be 3. So basically it's 5 times 3 to the 3rd. So 3 to the 3rd is 27. So basically this is 5 times 27, which is going to be 135. Now in this next one down here, 8 minus 1 is 7. So basically it's going to be 5 times 3 to the 7th. 3 to the 7th is 2,187. And 5 times that would be 10,935. In this problem then it means the first term is 5, which we can kind of see from here. The fourth term is 135. It would be the next number in this list if I were to keep going. So if I were to take one, if I were to take 45 and I were to multiply it by 3, I'd end up with this 135. And then the eighth term is 10,935. Okay, now those are the spotlight problems for 8.6.